When picking in the first round of the NFL Draft, the philosophy is supposedly best player available at a need. So experts rank their prospects, putting their value on players without knowing the value any of the 32 teams have on them. Let's keep in mind best player is a projection too. A lot of college superstars end up being busts in the NFL because they lack the right traits or go to a team where their traits don't fit what the team does. Some even end up on teams that don't have the coaching that can develop them into great players. So these teams better have a plan to develop what these players have to help the team. They have three years to show if they can get what they need out of the player. Head coach John Gruden made a great first round pick in his return to the NFL in 2018. Left tackle Colton Miller, despite being called a reach by the media, is what the draft is all about for the Raiders. He has all the traits for offensive line coach Tom Cable to develop into what he's becoming. Miller started his rookie season very well, giving up only one sack in his first four games. And he saw Bradley Chubb, the number five overall pick that year that would go on to have 12 sacks in week two. Chubb had no sacks and one pressure on Miller. He saw Robert Quinn in week three and held him to only two pressures with no sacks. And in week four, he saw second year star Miles Garrett. At the beginning of the game, Miller really wasn't having problems with Garrett. I'll have more on that later. But first we go to the running game, where Miller proved to be pretty good. I wouldn't call him a road grader, but you can depend on him at the point of attack. You can trust him to pull and hit somebody out in space. And when he wants to be, he can be a people mover. That should have been a touchdown, but anyway. In that fourth game of the season against Garrett and the Browns, he would injure his knee and not be the same the rest of the season. So he gave up a sack to Garrett late in that game. And the top flight edge rushers just kept coming, like Melvin Ingram the next week. He gave up a sack to him and everyone else that lined up over him. He gave up three sacks total in that game. Then the next week, Frank Clark got three sacks on him, beating him with speed. Hour. And an inside counter move. Miller made Clark look like a superstar that day. In the year two, Miller was better but still had problems with the inside counter move as he gives up this sack to Everson Griffin. This sack was charged to Miller for not picking up the blitz. The closest guy to the quarterback is the most dangerous man, so that's who you're supposed to take. And from there, Carl Lawson got him. Recent Raider edition Yannick Ngakwe got him. Ingram got him again in 2019. Joey Bosa got him. And who? Jeremiah Tachu got him. But again, Miller got better. 
His sacks given up went down from 14 to 7. Miller vs. Bosa is going to be a must-see TV for years to come. Each guy has had their moments against each other. And Clark, whom the Chiefs signed due to his perceived mastery of Miller, didn't give a healthy Miller any problems. Not in Game 1 or in Game 2. As a matter of fact, it seems as though Miller is a master Clark. And he continued not to have any problems with Chubb. Oh, and he saw Khalil Mack for the first time in 2019. And he acquitted himself. And while I still wouldn't call him a road grader, you can still depend on him at the point of attack in the running game. He can move people. And if he's double teaming, his man will definitely be moved. He can get to the second level and put in work. a good bet to get his man in open space when he pulls. He can hit you with the cut block too. Now we're on to year three where he had just a couple of hiccups. That's hiccup one. That's hiccup two. And that's it. He faced all kinds of edge rushers and only gave up two sacks. That's Brian Burns of the Carolina Panthers, tied for number 14 in sacks. That's Trey Hendrickson of the New Orleans Saints, tied for third in the NFL in sacks. Y'all already know Shaquille Barrett of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And of course you know Jason Pierre-Paul, JPP. And while he fell asleep against a no-name in this game, he didn't give anything up to Garrett. That ball is gone with the wind. When it comes to Clark, they ain't even work anymore. Justin Houston gave him problems as a rookie, but now, uh-uh. I'm telling you right now, Miller versus Bosa is going to be the main event every time the Raiders and Chargers play. Oh, and as a run blocker, still not a road grader but still dependable at the point of attack. Here he does just enough to get running back Josh Jacobs by. And here's a nice position block to get him outside. Okay, it's going to show a little bit of people moving ability here. He makes it to the second level here. And this second level block here is the difference between the six yard gain and the touchdown.
Miller was drafted by the Raiders at number 15 overall and literally fell on his butt as a rookie. Many called him a bust, but probably didn't realize he was playing on a knee that he shouldn't have been playing on. Frank Clark especially ate his lunch, which is why the Kansas City Chiefs signed him that offseason as a free agent. Miller then healed up and got back in the lab to work on his game with Cable. And the improvement was evident as Miller cut his sacks in half from 14 to 7. By year 3, Miller has mastered Clark and the rest of the NFL, only giving up two sacks. What a pick he has become for Gruden's Raiders. Thank you for watching. See you next time.